Right, I'm going to say afternoon everybody. This is Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator, following on from the last few videos where we're doing this room makeover. Now, the last video that you saw um, was actually preparing that ceiling, sealing it, sizing it, however you want to call it. Now, we're on the same day because that was done in the morning. We're now in the afternoon and I'm going to show you how to line this ceiling cross-lining a ceiling with wall rock. Now you're going to say to me, why are you cross-lining? Well, it's a good way. It's, um, let's start as you mean to go on. It's a good way to, and a good habit to get into if you can cross-line a ceiling prior to actually papering it. Now, if you don't know, I'm going to say to you, if you were doing this ceiling, you would start from the main light source, which is the win window there and you'd work from there all the way across to the opposite side. That, that's the traditional way of doing it and the correct way of doing it. And it's all to do with seeing the joints because if you work from the light source and you come all the way across, if your joints aren't perfect, you actually don't get a cast of shadow from that joint because of the light coming in through the window. And that all spans back from the days of trimming not being very good on papers, if you had to hand trim. Some of them, I don't know whether you've seen the video where my father's been talking about the salvage edge on the side of papers that used to knock off on the side of a table. And yeah, that was back in days of old when men were bold and toilets weren't invented. You know, the rest of that one. But today, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in from the opposite side of the room. So I'm gonna be hanging from this side going all the way over to there, if you can just see that, come back. So I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna show you how you do it because the same principles work for doing your lining as a finished paper. Well, it'd be nice to think so anyway. It doesn't always work like that and it doesn't always have to be like that because sometimes I can go to a job and I, I've got a feel for the ceiling, I've got a feel for the room and know that I could possibly, or I probably do do, hang the paper directly to a coving edge. And if it runs out, just adjust it as I'm hanging it. But not everybody can do that and I'm gonna tell you how to do it that you don't have to worry about that coving edge there running out. And it's all to do with offsetting that first length of paper. And I'm gonna show you how you do it. It's not complicated. I'm not gonna tell grandmother how to suck eggs if you are already are a decorator and you know how to do this. Clearly you don't need to be watching this unless you just like watching me. That's, I like that. But what we're gonna do, let me just tell you the principle of what we're gonna do. I'm gonna offer this paper up to that top edge there, can we see it, let's just do it there, into the corner and mark it for the, the width of the paper, which this is the 55 centimetre. So in effect, from that edge, top edge of the cove in there, it's coming out 55. I'm gonna put some marks all the way along, just using that, because that is the length. Just But then I'm gonna come in, let's call it an inch, so 25 mil, I'm gonna then reduce that mark by 25 mil. So in effect, an inch, 25 millimeters, 2.5 centimeters, will be overhanging that edge there. And that will allow for me to trim off some of this lining paper, or it could be a wallpaper, it doesn't matter, it just depends what you're doing. We're doing it with lining paper today, i.e. wall rock. It allows you to trim off that if that edge is running out, you've allowed for it. Makes sense. Now. I'll be honest, if it's lining paper, if it's wall rock, fibre lining, and it's not a finished paper, it doesn't really matter if it runs off and you have to juggle it about. Where you do want to make sure you're correct is your finished paper. And that will be another video after this one showing you how to actually hang a mural paper with that same principle, allowing a little bit of tolerance for the stuff to run out from the main light source coming all the way back towards the door, which is over this side there. But um, let me jump up the step up. If you can see me, great. If you can't, I'm sorry. And I'll talk you through what I'm doing just so you can get the basic principles. If I can zoom in, that might be better. All right, yeah, let's do that. I'm just up the step up, you can see me. 
And what I do, I'm offering that paper up to the edge, and I'm just going to mark it. I'm just going to mark it there. I know that's 55. I'm going to come all the way along like that. That is where that first length would be coming to. Like that. I'm going off camera, but I'll still speak to you. That's where that first length edge would be coming to if I hold straight to that coving edge. Now, you'd probably be fine doing it like that, but if it did run out, we don't want the hassle of trying to manoeuvre it and actually get it back again. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring it in slightly. Just moved you around, you might not see my head, but the principle's there. So that's at 55. You can see where I've done the mark there, in that corner. But I'm going to bring it in approximately, you're saying an inch. So I'm going to say it's about an inch there. And I bet if I get my ruler, I probably am at an inch. Let me just put my paper down. It's an inch. So what we're going to do, let's just see where that inch is. It's working out at, we'll do it in inches because it's the big numbers, now I've converted to cross. We are just 20, I'm going to say 20 and three quarter inches, which in new money, I'm going to do it in, let's call that 525 millimetres. So I'm just going to go across the ceiling now on that edge at 525 millimetres and mark it all the way. So when I hang the paper, the edge of the paper will be hung to that 525 millimetres. So we don't really need to do it in a few spots. We've got one there at 125. We're going to do another one at 125, just there. Another one a bit further up there. And I'm going to do that all the way across, so bear with me. So true to my word, I've gone across there, marking it from that coving edge, 525 millimetres, and I've got a pencil mark all the way along. Now, with my skill and expertise, I will be able to hang to those little spot lines going all the way across. But if you feel more confident to get somebody to help you and put a chalk line, string a line across, mark a line with something or other, please do that. You might have a laser liner with you that you can actually put on a fixed laser, position it on the floor so you've got a line going across those markings that you've actually got on the ceiling. If you feel comfortable doing that, please, it's not a wrong way of doing it. Just, I know how to hang paper. So I know that if I start here, and come all the way across these markings here, I can keep to that. And then whatever falls onto that coving edge just there is the part that's going to be um, salvaged and cut off. That will give me the tolerance if that is running out. And then working the way across the ceiling all the way to the other side, you just bought joint. You bought joint. It's straightforward. It's not rocket science. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get the first length on for you. I'll probably show you doing the second length, then just let me finish off because when you get to the other end, there'll be a little bit of trimming down to do. That's all it'll be. Now, this ceiling measures across just over three meters. Now, it would have been nice to actually work with wider widths of wall rock, either a 750 or a meter, but because of how it was falling, I didn't want to put little, a little strip in that far end. So what I've done, I've gone for the 55 centimeter width. Yeah, I've probably, doubling up on how many lengths I've got to put, but it does mean that I've got a sizable length to actually put in at the end. And as I say, this ceiling is going to take me no more than an hour, if properly. Well, we'll see. Depends how I feel. Depends if I talk, want to talk to you. But we'll start from here, go all the way across and get it down. Once it's dry, I've told you on previous videos, around this edge, the last video you saw, the time before, I've actually filled that edge there with some of that nice filler that I got from the decorating show back in November. 
it's now been sealed and I'll call it sized. It's now been sealed with the Beeline Primer Sealer. It's all nice. It's all dry. But what are we doing once that once that war rock lining paper is on? I'll be going round with a fine bead of cork just to seal that edge in to make it neat. And you say, why do I do that? One, it neatens off that edge. If you were actually painting the ceiling, you'd have a nice edge across the ceiling. You won't see a cut edge, not that you'll see a cut edge, but you know what I mean. But when I come to actually hang the finished paper, I can then put the blade, cutting blade, into something soft, and the softness will be the actual cork. Uh, going into plaster of Paris or filler, you can break it away and it crumbles from you. That's just a, a tip that I'm gonna give you that cork your edges before you start doing any cutting with your blade. And that's it. Now, tools, I've got a hanging brush. I've got, a, in my pocket, a squeegee smoother. I've got that. Tub paste of choice today is straight out the tub, no thinning. It's the Wix tub paste. I've got a long pile roller, which is the Rota Gold long pile, because I want to put plenty of actual adhesive onto the ceiling, roll it out. You don't want to be oozing loads of paste everywhere, but I'm going to roll it out. Just work with a section at a time. You only need to go just beyond what your width will be with your cutting in and then rolling. And once that's on, it's quite warm in here. I might actually open the door to get some colder air coming in because I don't want that paste drying too quickly. Having that sealer on it has taken that porosity off that surface and that's why we've done it. That's why you size. That's why you size um, a wall or a ceiling prior to paint. paint. That is why you size a ceiling or a wall prior to papering it because you don't want the paste that you're using to try and keep the wallpaper, the lining paper on the surface being sucked into that surface because the porosity of the surface is just drawing it all in. But you probably know that already. If you don't, some comments. So yeah, just bear with me. I'm just gonna get uh, a brush out. I'm gonna get some paste out. I'm gonna cut in around the edge. I'm gonna roll it and then we're gonna start papering and I'll paper directly off the roll. Skills, skills. It's not, it's just how you do it. See you in a bit. Right, you just saw me get that pasted. As, as I say, put plenty on because you want to make sure that it's not drying off on you. Now, working off the roll, I'm just taking the piece of tape off that was holding it in place. And I'll be working off one side, which is the inside. It doesn't really matter which side you use, but it's just easy if you work off the inside because it is easier to pull it off the roll. You can see me, what I'm going to be doing is hanging it to that actual, I'll come over this side, you can see me, I'm going to hang it to that edge that I can see, like that, pull it out, get it in position, So we'll come back to it and get it down. Pull it across. That's all on that line now. Just gotta get it down and work it.
I'm just going to pull it back again because the ceiling is running out. Bit of a crease there. It's the beauty of this fibre liner. straight edge cutter so I'm just going to trim these off now. Once you've got it on, just wipe down the edges so there's no paste on the actual coating. I'll say it's as easy as that. Obviously, I struggled a little bit because I've got to manipulate it onto that edge with the salvage. But once it's down and once you know the feel of the paper, you're well away. Now, just warm water is enough to actually wipe off the paste. You know what I've said about contract false opacity paints. When you've got cheap contract matte paints, you'll probably find that the paint comes across, um, comes off on your sprun. Um, oh, I can't even say it. You'll probably find that with the cheap contract matte paints, it'll come off. On your sponge if you're wiping around with warm water now with the seal in that that wasn't happening so we're all right with that so uh, let me just move everything around I'll just check all the edges and then I'll show you doing the second length right when I got that first length on you, you saw I struggled a little bit and it was pulling away on me I I wasn't too worried with it being a, a non-woven paper because it's not going to rip on you but because these ceilings aren't brilliant there was a bit of a crease forming there, about there, even though I was trying to follow those markings. Now that crease, I had to get out because it was throwing it all out. So that's why I pulled back to rehang and let it go where it wanted to go. It might have just slightly gone off that 525 marker. I'm not too worried, it's lining paper. And to be fair, with us having that bit of a salvage edge on it, it didn't really matter whether it wavered. Well, that, I've gone up and just checked it. It's down lovely, there's no crease in it. There's no crease that's formed in the non-woven wall rock and it is down nicely. I've made sure that the squeegee has gone into all those corners there and across that face and we're all down. 
As I've said, I'm going to be corking that when it's dry, so that will just nip anything down that might just look a little bit suspect. And also, with non-woven, if you do see edges coming away, you can just peel it back slightly and get a bit more paste uh, at a later date. But if you can get it down now, you're saving yourself any hassle in the future. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the position of the camera back up like that. I'm going to start pasting and as I said to you, get plenty on because this is your lining paper going onto a surface that was porous. We put a sealer on it, but we still need to have plenty of paste on it because we're going from one side to the other, which is just over three meters. It's not a massive room, but it's a nice sizable room. Because we're not actually pasting the paper, we haven't got the paper being soaked or over soaked. We're putting it straight on and it is nice to work with War Rock. These are short widths. I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be looking at three widths, three lengths, three widths to a roll, but all in all, we're going to be doing it in about six. So we're fine. I'm going to get it pasted. Let's get another one up and see if we can do it a little bit easier than last time. Make sure when you paste it, you paste further than where the actual paper will be going. And another thing, when you're doing your lining paper, if your paper's going to be, if you, another thing, if you're going to be doing lining paper and you're going to be papering over that lining paper, it doesn't matter if you get some paste on your lining paper. It would matter if you've got a finished paper. I'm going to say as easy as that, but you know what plastering's are like, and if you're, a, if you're an experienced paper on you know what I'm going to say. If the surface is slightly, let's call it not flat, even though I'm butt jointing all the way across, we got to a point, I could feel it just about there, that the paper was going where the ceiling was going and not where the butt joint was. So I had to work on that section just there he saw me pulling it back, bumping it across, because there's still enough slip in that paste to get it butt joint and force it across. Now, it's more difficult with a non-woven paper to force paper across because there's no stretch actually in the paper, so you've just got to manipulate it. But that now is back, back on as a butt joint, but it did take a bit of work there. I was on all the way across till about three quarters, then I could just see it starting to part like, Moses and the Red Sea, it was just parting. Pulled it back, moved it, pulled it back, moved it, and then we started to get it back again. But I've just had to make sure that all my joints are down. And what I'm gonna do in a moment, I'm just gonna pick up my seam roller and just whiz over that seam just to make sure it is down. Because the paper that's going on is a darkish color with color in it, and I don't want to see any sprung joints. There won't be any sprung joints because I'll make sure that they're all down, but that's just something to be wary of. So um, I'm gonna crack on now. The next time you'll see me, I'm just gonna explain about going around that light fitting, pulling it through. But other than that, I'm gonna crack on, get it finished, then we'll just do a bit of a, a sum up at the end. But it's not easy, but I will say lining a ceiling is the easiest part of papering because you've only got one thing to go around and it's normally a light ceiling centre. So other than that, let's crack on with it and um, see you at the end. So now at the centre light, and the principle is the same whether you're doing a finished paper or lining paper, try and cut a hole big enough 
for the socket to go through. And if you do a star cut, that will probably be enough for it to go through. And it feels that will be just right. Cut a bit further back if you need to. And that is in place. We can sort that out when the new light fitting goes up. So that is as simple as that. And then just get your paper down. So brilliant. Let's carry on. Right. We're coming to the last piece now. From the width being so big, we've got to cut a bit off. But I'm not working off a board. I'm going to literally hang it to that where you can just see it. I'm going to hang it onto the ceiling and literally cut it off as I'm actually there. So it might be a bit of a waste dropping off, but hey ho, it doesn't matter, does it? We can get there in the end. So I'd probably say we're probably going to cut off about that much. So from that much, we're going to see in a minute. Got my hair messed up. That was probably the easiest one to go on. It didn't run out on the joint, whereas the pre previous um, lengths that went on, we're all running out at this bottom end. That's gone on straight. It's not wavered or anything. Now, I've just released the pressure from the corners, both sides, cut and trimmed off the ends like I did with the main ones. And now all I've got to do is just get that edge into the coving, get it down, cut it, and then just go over it and make sure the corners and edges are down. So nearly there, seeing a few, um, uh, give us a couple of minutes. There we have it, everybody. What did it say, an hour or so? I know that's what I've done, I've lined that ceiling. As I said, very tricky those first couple of lengths, that first length, it had a mind of its own, but coming all the way across to this very end here, Jobs are good. It went on lovely. It went on a dream, actually. It's buttered up lovely. All of these joints are butt up. If there is a fraction of a gap, and I mean a fraction of a gap, it's neither here nor there. It's not a gap. It's just, just it's moved. I'd say moved. But as I came across to this side above my head, it was literally nun's knickers job. Tight as nun's knickers. But I'm pleased with that. That is now a sound base for me to put the mural paper on when this room's been painted and the woodwork's been done. So I have nothing more to say. How many, how many have I had to drink? Nothing more to say. Don't be frightened of lining a ceiling. If you've got the steps and the battens and things to get across the ceiling, you're fine. Make sure you've got a sharp blade. Snap off blades are ideal because you can snap them off every so many cuts. Stanley blades. I don't care for those so much because you've only got one cutting angle on both ends. It's not like having a snap off blade with about nine perforated cut blade edges. But all in all, that's really good. And I'll see you on the next one. There'll be some videos coming up at the side. Thanks for listening to me on this. It's going to be a nice playlist from a transformation of this room that it is, as you see it now, to something a little bit different. And um, a quick lick of paint. It'll look a new room, say no more, say no more.